Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to speak a bit about specific heat capacity. Now, the specific heat capacity is a particular property of a certain material. So you'll remember in previous videos where we spoke about energy transfer, we mentioned that the actual material that something is made of affects how much energy is transferred. So whether it's a good conductor or a good insulator, that is all affected by the actual material. Okay, so what's important is that how much an object can be heated up depends on its mass. So the mass of an object, also the substance that it is, so the material, as we just said, and lastly, the amount of energy supplied. So amount of energy. There we go. So they all affect the amount that a substance is heated up. And what we are going to look at is a property of the material itself, which is the specific heat capacity. Now I'm first going to mention the definition of specific heat capacity. And that is the amount of energy which is required to heat one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Now one example that you are given is water. You don't need to remember this figure, but water, the specific heat capacity for water is around 4,200 joules. Remember, energy is measured in joules. So that's joules per kilogram per kilogram per degree Celsius. And so we can write that as 4.2 kilojoules because 4,200 joules is 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram per degree Celsius. And this is the specific heat capacity for water. And often you'll see specific heat capacity given the symbol C. So C is equal to 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Now this is great because it means that let's say for example we had water and in here we have one kilogram of water. Okay, and let's say, for example, it's at 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, if I came across and I dumped in 4,200 joules or 4.2 kilojoules, same thing, into here, so that's heat. Okay, so that energy, well, it could be energy um, in a different way, but we're talking about heat here. So energy chucked in, this would then raise the temperature by one degree Celsius. So we'd now have water of 16 degrees Celsius. Okay, and importantly, this carries over when we, when we are not using one kilo. So let's say that this, for example, is a container which has two kilograms of water at 15 degrees Celsius, for example. We would have to come along and dump in double the amount of energy. So double 4.2 is 8.4 kilojoules or 8,400 joules in here, that would raise the temperature to 16 degrees Celsius because for every kilo we need 4,200 joules or 4.2 kilojoules and as we have two kilos we need to double it and add 8.4. Okay and that will vary for each substance. So some substances have a really low specific heat capacity, some have one which is really high and that affects how easy it is to raise their temperature. Okay, all this can be summed up in an equation. So for any substance, E, which is our amount of energy we need to supply, is equal to the mass of the substance we have times by our specific heat capacity, okay, which is labeled C, times by theta, we just give it a label theta, but that is the change in temperature, okay? So this is our energy, 
This here is the mass of our material. This here is the specific heat capacity. And theta is our temperature change. Remember, this is not just the temperature. So over here, it wasn't 15 degrees or 16 degrees. This is our temperature change. So in the example we mentioned here, it would have been one degree Celsius, okay? So very important, this is not temperature, it's temperature change. Now, one thing is that always in physics, it's important to be consistent with our units. So here I've mentioned joules and kilojoules. Um, we are going to, always in this equation, we're gonna use joules to begin with, okay? And that means we have to be consistent all the way through. So our mass is going to be in kilograms. Our specific heat capacity is going to be in joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. And our temperature change is going to be in degrees Celsius, okay? So you'll see that we have joules here and joules here. We have kilograms here, kilograms here, degrees Celsius here, and degrees Celsius here. If we wanted this in kilojoules, we would have to have the specific heat capacity in kilojoules, okay? So just make sure the units match. Okay, now let's have a look at an example problem. So here we have 0.5 kilograms of H2O or water, and we want to raise that from 13 degrees Celsius to 19 degrees Celsius, okay? And I've just written again the specific heat capacity of water. So we need to calculate how much energy is required to carry out this change. Okay, so let's just sub into our equation. We know that energy is equal to the mass, which in this case is 0 0.5. 0 0.5, and that is multiplied by our specific heat capacity, and we're dealing in joules, so we're gonna write 4,200. And what is theta? Well, we are starting at 13 degrees, and we are ending at 19. So the difference between them is 19 take 13, which is six. So this is going to be multiplied by 6. Okay, now if you carry out this calculation, you will get um, 12,600 joules. Okay, so you put this in your calculator or you do it in your head because you know that half of 6 is 3 and you could times it that way. Either way, you're going to get an answer of 12,600 joules. If the question asked for it in kilojoules, we could convert that and say that 12,600 is the same as 12.6 kilojoules, okay? But I'm gonna leave it in joules for now. Okay, so that's just a simple example problem which you could be given. Okay, now let's have a look at one more problem which is slightly more difficult because you have to rearrange the equation. So here we are told that 9,000 joules of energy cause a metal block of one kilogram, so the block weighs one kilo, to increase from 10 degrees Celsius to 17 degrees Celsius. Now we need to find our specific heat capacity. So again, I'm gonna fill in all of the information using our equation. So E is equal to mc theta. Now we already know our energy, so we know that 9,000 is equal to, do we know our mass? We do, we're told it's one kilo block. So that's equal to one times by, C is what we're trying to find, and that is times by theta. And theta is going to be the difference between 17 and 10. So 17 take 10 will give us a difference of seven degrees Celsius. So that is times by seven. So what we have here is that C is being times by one and times by seven. So one times seven is just seven. So we can say that 9,000 is equal to seven times by C, because we've already times one and seven. Okay, now we want C on its own, and if it's being times by seven, so seven lots of C are 9,000, one lot of C is going to be seven times smaller. So we need to divide both sides by seven to get rid of this seven. Divide by seven. And that will mean that C is equal to 9,000 divided by our seven. And remember, that's come from seven times one. So seven times one, which is just seven. Now we put that into our calculator and we will get C is equal to 1,285.7. Uh, 
So if I was going to round that to the nearest joule, it would round up to 1286. And that is joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Okay. And so this would be our specific heat capacity of our unknown metal. Okay, so that's just another example of how they can word the questions. You need to be able to rearrange to find anything if you are given the rest of the information. Okay, perfect. Now, one last thing I want to mention is a storage heater. Storage heater. Now, the way that storage heaters work is that they contain concrete blocks. And these concrete blocks... They might not be concrete, they might be some other type of brick, but often they are concrete. And they have very high specific heat capacity. Okay, so SHC there, I could just write it as C, because that's how we see it in the equation. High specific heat capacity, which means that they will heat up very slowly and they will cool down very slowly. So they can heat slowly and they cool slowly and heat capacity well capacity just means how much it can take and so that means it can actually store a lot of heat so store a lot of heat okay why this is handy is that we can turn on these heaters at night and it will take a long time for them to heat up and then if we need the heat during the day because it takes a long time for them to cool down, they will slowly and steadily give out heat during the day. So we can heat at night, okay, and then they will cool down during day. And the way they cool down is they give out heat. So giving out heat as a heater. Okay, so sometimes this is good because it means that we can save money on electricity um, because a lot of the time the electricity bills or the gas bills or whatever are high during peak times. So if we turn them on during the middle of the night, the electricity cost can be reduced. And so this is one idea behind these storage heaters. Okay, and so I think that's about enough there. Um, obviously, we could go into more detail and do more questions on it. But if you do have any questions for me, then please do feel free to send me an email using the link below or by commenting and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.